turn in your Bibles this morning to the sixth chapter of the book of Romans. If you're using a pew Bible, it's page 1116. Before we read the word and before I begin, I'm going to ask my wife Kathy to ask the Lord's blessing on what we do here this morning. Lord, right now we lift up this sermon, this message to, to you. We pray that you would open our ears and open our hearts to what you would have for us. I lift up Tony, this man of God, this child of yours. I pray that you anoint him, that you give him your focus and your direction and your vision for our church family. I pray that you help him to deliver what message you have for us this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Beginning at verse 1, and I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible, so it's going to be a little bit different than what you're reading, but that's okay. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace might increase? May it never be. How shall we who died to sin live in it? Or do you not know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death in order that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, Certainly we shall also, in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him, that our body of sin might be done away with. We should no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died is freed from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, is never to die again, and death no longer is master over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all of us. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey its lusts. And do not go on presenting the members of your body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. The New Testament speaks of three different resurrections. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead that we celebrate on this day, Easter. It's a holiday recognized by many. Earlier on in the book of Romans, Paul says that if you, if you, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's that simple. Believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead and that he is Lord and confess that with your mouth. I believe that Jesus is Lord, the Son of God, and I confess that with my mouth. And I believe in my heart that Jesus is, was raised by the glory of the Father from the dead. It's that simple. That's salvation. You don't have to do anything other than those two things, believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. That's the result of the first resurrection of Jesus from the dead. The, result, the second resurrection, we'll go to the end, is the resurrection of the dead when the Lord returns. All those who have died will be raised from the dead. Everyone will be raised from the dead. And then there's the resurrection in the middle. Jesus' resurrection, the spiritual resurrection of those who believe now. 
here and now, and then the physical resurrection from the dead at the end of time. This is what I want to address this morning. And it's always hard to know what to talk about on an Easter Sunday, but the message is a simple one. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace might increase? May it never be. How shall we who died to sin live in it? Wait a minute. I died to sin? Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? This is not talking about baptism as a physical immersion in water. This is talking about like the way we would use the term, oh, he got his baptism of fire. You know, he went to work. The first customer he dealt with today was a real pain in the butt. And he got his baptism of fire. And he handled it pretty well, that guy. But do you not know, may it never be, how shall we who died to sin still live in it? Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? We have been immersed into the death of Christ. And if we are in Christ, then we are dead to sin because he died to sin once and he didn't just die to it for himself, he died to it for all of us. He died to it for all of us. We are dead to sin if we should choose to believe it. I know that sin still exists in my body and I know that the fact that sin exists in me and it has had an impact on my thinking on my thought process, on my emotions, on my will. Yet I can believe that I am dead to sin. Oof. Therefore, we have been buried with him, verse 4, through baptism into death, in order that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. This is the process that we go through. I'll read a little something to you by, um, written by Andrew Womack about this. He says, Our spirits have already died with Christ unto sin. Our spirits, the part of us that is eternal and will live forever, not my mind, not my body, but my spirit has already died unto sin and has been resurrected unto newness of life. He owns my spirit. His spirit embraces my spirit. It is one and that will live forever. Yet this newness of life, this is the thing, this is the key. The newness of life, which is a reality in our spirits, does not automatically manifest itself in our flesh. Ah, ah, automatically. And here's the thing in verse 5. For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, if we have become united with Jesus Christ in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. This can be very confusing. But we're talking about the impact of sin in our, in our souls. And we talk about this, we have talked about this again and again. But it's very important to get this concept of dead to sin. If we have become united with him in the likeness of his death. That word that is translated in this as united, Robin has it in the King James Version and it says, if we have been planted, if we have been planted with him in the likeness of his death. A sower takes seed and he goes out into a field that has been prepared and he scatters the seed left and right, row upon row. Say it's a wheat field. The process of germination takes place 
and the wheat grows. The seeds were sown together and they grow together. They grow together. The seed is planted and it grows together. If we have been united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in likeness of his resurrection. United, planted, growing together. Those two concepts. At first I thought it means this, but no. What it means is that the seed, the likeness of him in his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Lord, help me here. Help me here. The seeds grow together. As I become like him in his death, as I understand that I am like him in his death, then I can also be like him in his resurrection. And those two seeds grow together. The understanding that my mind has, that when I say to my flesh, I am dead to sin. When the lust comes or the envy comes or the pride comes and I say to my flesh, I am dead to sin. In my spirit, I want to be dead to sin in my mind, but sin has taken hold in my mind. And it can have footholds in my mind until I go through this process of being like him in his death and saying to my flesh, I am dead to sin. When that envy comes, when that covetousness comes, when that impulse in your flesh comes of needing to be fed, and you say, I am dead to sin in Christ, and you focus on that, then the seed of the resurrection power that exists in Christ Jesus that in Ephesians we've been studying says it, it lives within us, it exists within us. The resurrection of power of Christ is in me. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead took dead flesh and put new life into it that will live forever. When that, when that exists in me, the two grow together. My death to sin grows as my death to sin grows, so the resurrection power, the life of God within me grows. There are, part, there are times, there are many times that I have experienced in my life as a believer where I have not really been convinced that I am dead to sin because it feels quite alive. It feels quite alive. You know, I'm not afraid to admit that. I'm not afraid to admit that. Anger. Me and Dave were sharing something last week about stupid drivers, you know? <laughs> Envy, lust, greed, pride, wrath, gluttony, laziness, seven deadly sins. Seven sins that exist in the flesh. Do all of them exist in me? Perhaps. Do some have footholds in me? Do some have footholds in you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And you know, the life that Jesus lived, he lived for us so that we could be redeemed to be in relationship with his Father and our God. And there came a point in time in, in the Gospel of John where he's talking to his disciples and it was time for him to go to deal with what was coming, the cross, the end of it, the final testing in the Garden of Gethsemane to give his will completely to the Father. And he said to his disciples, the prince of this world is judged and he has no hold on me anymore. There is no place where he can touch me anymore. There was nothing that he could be tested with or tempted with by the enemy, by the devil himself, any longer. It was finished in that regard. There was no foothold in him where he could be touched. It was now between him and his father, 
Not my will, but your will. If I have to drink this cup, I will, but please take it from me. He knew how hard that was going to be, but that was all that was left. Yet within you and me, and even within the Apostle Paul, there remain places that we have not dealt with or acknowledged that we are dead to sin. The Apostle Paul says, I want to know Christ. I want to know his fellowship of his sufferings so that I might attain to the resurrection of the dead. I might attain to the resurrection of the death that still lives within me, the place where there are footholds where I have not completely yield. And God knows what those places are in you and in me. And he will deal with those things in our lives by the circumstances, situations, problems, trials, and testings that he allows to cross our path. He gives me opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to come to the fullness of understanding of what it means to be dead to sin. The reality of this concept in a believer produces, allows to grow the resurrection power of Jesus Christ within us. As I become like him in his death, I become like him in his resurrection power. And that power is not something that is for me and me to have and for me to do with what I want to do. No, that power is to the glory of God. That power is for the edification of the church. That power is for drawing believers to Jesus Christ. Karen Keith told, me, told us a story one time about how she was at a car show, I think, right? And that old man, this old, old gentleman, just he came up to her. And he started talking to her. And we, we, we all knew that when she was telling this story that this was the Lord that this man was drawn to. The resurrection power. The reality of that in her spirit, in her soul. See, it's in my spirit. It wants to grow in my soul. But the death of sin in me must grow alongside of it. That's the concept. United, planted, united, growing together in unison. The death of the flesh, the death of sin in my flesh, and the growth of the resurrection power. Springs of living water will flow from your belly. That's how it happens. And it's nothing that we control. It's nothing that we control. <laughs> Suffering is a part of this. I read about that what Paul said in Philippians. We've heard it before, but today is today. Uh, <clears throat> I want to know him, Jesus Christ, and the power of his resurrections and the fellowship of his sufferings and be conformed to his death in order that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this. This is the Apostle Paul. Not that I have already been perfected. But I press on in order that I may lay a hold of that for which he has laid hold of me. I forget what happened yesterday. I'm dealing with what happens today. And I press on towards the goal for which he has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. The message of the gospel is very simple. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. The process of sanctification is something that requires discipline, work, intensity, 
and desire. And as a church, you need to know that I am going through this process and I am succeeding and I am failing. And I am just like Paul. I'm forgetting what happened yesterday and I'm dealing with today, today, and I'm pressing on towards what he has called me to. That I may become more and more in my experience of the death of my flesh and more and more in the, in the growth of the resurrection, of pow resurrection power of Jesus Christ in me, in my soul. God is so good. God is so good. Yeah. He ends that section of scripture in Romans. For sin shall not be master over you, period. For you are not under law, but you are under grace. You are under grace. He begins by saying, don't let grace be an opportunity to indulge your sinfulness. We are not under the law, we are under grace. The, the law was nailed to the cross with Jesus Christ. It was, it was nailed to the cross. The law is no more. Sin shall not be our masters. For we are under grace. You say amen. Now receive this benediction from the Lord. Now may the God of peace himself save you and sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you and is calling you is faithful, and he will surely do it. Amen. Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter.